Wait, wait, that's that's a coffee. Yep. That's a lot. That's a lot of coffee right there. That yeah, looks like a is. soda. That looks like it's a, a look. Coke. Listen, I didn't want it, I didn't want branding, so I took it out of the. You know, I went to the the local coffee shop. Oh, okay. And uh, you know, I don't <laughs> want to give them free advertising. And uh, then I poured it into this cup. See, you should have gone to the local coffee shop. <laughs> And gave him like a flyer or say, say, hey, we're doing this podcast. Yeah. I've got so many listeners. Let me promote your brand. Do you think um, they need promotion in this <clears throat> local coffee shop? Not at all. No. Right. I think America <laughs> runs on it. Let's Talk Oculus is proudly sponsored by the good folks at Patreon. If you want to support the show, join us on patreon.com forward slash playtest VR. What's up, Oculus nerds? I'm Dan from Playtest VR. Welcome back to episode 40 of Let's Talk Oculus. As always, I'm joined by the Samurai Master, Samson. How you doing? Hello, hello, hello. I would not go so far as to call myself a master. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll talk about your samurai skills a little later on. Um, today, we're joined by a special guest, developer of the upcoming VR physics-based combat game called Samurai Slaughterhouse. Justin, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. We were discussing before the podcast on how amazing your t-shirt is. Um, you a big Marvel fan, I assume? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we're all fans of the comics. I go to like LA Comic Con every year. Like, nice. Like yeah. Sweet, sweet. Are you looking forward to Doctor Strange? Yeah, yeah. We already got our tickets and everything, so excited oh, nice. for Doctor Strange. <laughs> Sweet, sweet. Um, awesome, awesome. So um, today's show is going to be a little bit different to what we're used to. Um, we'll be talking to Justin about his road to VR development, his course, and of course the game Samurai Slaughterhouse, the one that he's working on. Um, also, just depending on what time you listen to this, uh, me and Samson will be streaming live for the MetaQuest Gaming Showcase on Wednesday, April 20th. We've never done this before, so <laughs> it could be a lot of technical difficulties, but hopefully we do it on there. So links will be in the description if you want to join us for that. There's always some housekeeping as well before we get un underway. Um, Let's Talk Oculus is available on all video or on YouTube, sorry, um, under the Let's Talk Oculus name where you can see Samsung's pretty face and Justin's beautiful t-shirt. Um, it's also available on all audio platforms, all podcast platforms, and some rubbish ones as well. If you want to be a part of the show, send in your questions at letstalkoculus at gmail.com or you can join the Discord, which has been buzzing lately. Um, and you can join us on there. If you want to hang out in VR, just join us on the Discord. Um, and finally, if you want to throw us a dollar, um, visit patreon.com forward slash playtest VR for any early access episodes. And a quick note, we have merch that's going to go live this week as recording. Ooh, ooh, so ooh, ooh, ooh. the merch store is going to be linked in the description as well, uh, where we have our first t-shirt and our first hoodie. So definitely go ahead and check that out. <clears throat> All right, let's get into the show. Justin, let's, let's, um, we'll talk about Samurai Solar House in a bit. But let's dial it all the way back from young Justin when he first became <laughs> like a developer. Um, assuming you did development before VR, what was that? What was that like? What, what, what were you doing in the early stages? So I did, yeah, start playing around with development when I was real small, probably I think like eight or nine. And wow. As soon as I could get my hands on anything to make games with, I'd use wow. like click and play, um, RPG Maker, whatever I could. You know, I made. Mm -hmm. A lot of like platformers. Uh, it was funny because I teamed up with a friend and we had made a game we called like the Samurai and the Hero, and you actually just walked around like chopping ninjas' heads off. And we, we always joke around that my game now is like the spiritual successor. It to is. That. It sounds like <laughs> it. Sounds yeah. like it. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, yeah. So I, I played around with that a lot. Um, and with like yeah, RPG Maker. Um, I did some like crazy stuff with. I actually made like a monster collecting game and um, mm. kind of like a Pokemon type clone. So even though like you didn't actually like type in the code in it like you still got to use like programming it which was nice because yeah. you're able to use like if and then statements so that kind of like from an early age got me used to using like logic so i think like later on life that helped mm -hmm. um and awesome. then yeah and then uh from there i kind of uh I kind of stopped making games for a while, and then I we actually picked it back up again as I found out, like, the Doom engine was, like, open source. So mm -hmm. I started playing around with that, um, trying to make my own game, like, the same way they did it, like, in the 90s. It was insane, <laughs> like, having to scale sprites and all this crazy stuff. But um, <laughs> then I picked up a, a Quest and, and started playing VR, and I was like, dude, this is amazing. 
and I'm like, you know, there's barely any games on here. Like, I feel like, you know, this is like a, a scene I can hop into. And at the same mm. time, I had picked up like a Unity um, like tutorial and started doing that. And it was funny because one of the first things in the Unity tutorial was how to set up the UI and it automatically scales to your screen and everything perfectly. Whereas mm. in the Doom engine, you have to do that manually for each resolution and it just got <laughs> wow. insane. And I was like, why am I making games like it's like 40 years like, ago? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's You're today. HTML. Yeah. You're literally yeah. trying to make <laughs> literally trying to make doom like it was actually made in the 90s and such like 80s. yeah same engine and everything yeah like yeah. I mean, a little bit better tools but it was yeah it was nuts like i was like there's a reason they don't make games like this anymore like <laughs> oh man but uh... for sure wow so like um so it was the quest it was the original quest where you first kind of got your hands in vr and that's where it... so not not too long ago so like 2017 yeah and actually kinda... More recently, I really started development. I think end of 2019, like I, I barely started like touching it, and then um, I kind of made like a like a little roguelike shooter type game, real basic. I never released it because it uh, ended up just having all kinds of weird problems. So yeah. um, I was like, you know, let me just work out something else. But um, I was gonna so, say, yeah, bring kinda... it to the patrons. <laughs> uh, yeah, I may release it on there. Like I may fix it up a little bit. Like uh, uh, now that I went back and played, everything's all like archaic on it. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I did this like this way. And <laughs> but uh, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. How was how was the transition from like normal development into VR using Unity? Was it fairly straightforward to pick up, or was there quite as was a big learning curve? I think from... it was pretty straightforward, just because I wasn't already like really super set like in my ways of doing things. And, um, you know, there were a lot of good tutorials out there. Um, Tefik, I know this is this guy he does. He puts tutorials up there on um, Udemy. I followed his. is really great. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's what's kind of nice about it. Is you, there's a lot of, like, tools that are already out there that you can kind of just drag it in and just drop it and hit play, and it'll work. Mm-hmm. So um, you can get started really basic, and then you can just, the more you do it, you just keep getting, like, deeper and deeper into it. But it's it, there's a lot yeah. of stuff out there that makes it pretty easy to at least get, like, you know, the first started on it. Yeah, there's a lot of software in there where you don't have to actually need to know how to code that much anymore because there are some engines that they've already wrote with code for specific elements, and you can just drag and drop and i know it's not the best going forward but at least it gives you that itch right and gets you in there to start off right yeah and it gets so. you started and then um and i mean even with those if you're using it as soon as you want to start adding things and building out there you have to like code to kind of like connect everything together mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of good places you know to get started so um you know especially if you already have like the flat thing in unity it's it's really not that big a difference it's like a different camera type there's a few other you know trackers mm-hmm. for the hands but it's uh, not really a huge difference from developing <clears throat> for you know, flat yeah. games <clears throat> what was your uh what was your first quest game that you uh, bought, that, not that you made. Oh, that I bought. Oh, okay, so that I bought was uh, Vader Immortal. I'm like a big mm. Star Wars fan. So mm. it, was it Vader Immortal? Was it? No, no, it was Vader Immortal because I remember I bought the quest. It originally came with, with it, the right? intent to just use it for PC VR. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't remember if it came with it. I, I think yeah. it had. I maybe it came with like a coupon for like ten dollars gotcha. off your first game. Mm. No, no, yeah, I know. I know it came with that one time. I had, I was not that early on the quest. Gotcha. Um, yeah. I had actually got the quest because all the rifts were like sold out everywhere. But then, you know, I actually prefer you turn out the quest was better because you can use it wirelessly and all you can that. But, do uh, both, like, can't you? So Yeah, yeah, which was nice. So, but yeah, before I got it set up on the computer, I bought Vader and Mortal and I played it and I was like, wow, this is like amazing. And mm-hmm. then uh, one of the first things I picked up was Super Hot because I had played like the flat version of that and loved it. So as soon as I got virtual <clears throat> desktop going, I was like, I got to play Super Hot. So I picked that up, up on my PC and like, nice. uh, blow, blown away. I loved it. It's just, oh, like, yeah. just the flat version. <laughs> I never yeah. played the flat version. I don't know that I could go back, go to it now, though. It's good, though. It's not, it's not like a one-for-one. One. It, um, it has its own, like, ups that the VR okay. version doesn't have. Like, each version is, is good in it for its, in own, its like, own, like, different way. reasons. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, th- I do like Super... I, I, mean, I know what you mean, though. When you, when you go into VR, sometimes VR just makes it a little bit better. That has immersive, and it's like, oh, God. It's, I did the same thing with Resident Evil. Resident Evil 7... <laughs> And playing it flat was great, but then putting it into VR, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like a another stimulation. Like, it's just so good. Yeah, yeah. I think you know? like uh, Elder Scrolls and like Fallout, like as soon as you play it in VR, you're like, well, I don't want to play the flat version anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, So obviously you started with Quest and then you had that that game. Um, Was there any like PC, v- did you dabble into PC VR quite a lot as well then? Yeah, PC VR is definitely what I did a lot of. So um 
you know, I of course played like Alex, and then uh, mm. and I remember the first time I played Alex, I was like blown away. I was like, oh man, I need to step up my game. <laughs> and then, <laughs> that's when I was like, all right, we gotta get the dynamic hand pose, and we gotta get the full body out there. We gotta like step it up because <laughs> there's stuff out here they, like they this, set like, the bar. Yeah. Yeah. They set the bar like way up here though. <laughs> I know. And then um the other one that's really good is like Saints and Sinners, just like everything they do, mm-hmm. like the menus and like the UI. And, like uh when you play yeah. Samurai Slaughterhouse, you could tell like we just straight up stole their backpack system. Like, I saw that straight rain. away. As soon as straight away at the start of Samurai, and we'll talk about it later on, but I took the backpack off and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is Walking Dead. <laughs> this is exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it's great not though. To change something that, that works so exactly. well. Like <laughs> Yeah, the, the backpack if it ain't works broke. so well, for sure. I think that's um, not, yeah. We'll talk about inspiration later on. We'll get we'll get to that part. Um, in terms of in terms of the actual as a gamer, then do you play much at all now? Because you're like more full time development, or is it really affecting? What you yeah, play? like my 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 play time definitely got cut down recently. I have been able to play more because at first I was still working a full time job, and then mm. I started developing my free time, and now I've been able to, to quit and just move into development full time. Nice. So now I do have actually like free time here and there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'll get into some VR game. I've been into like a lot of the space sims lately. Um, mm. I've been playing uh, besides Rogue Squadron. There's one called Overload, which is basically like Descent, like that old DOS game, but like they made like a new uh-huh. modern one, like VR support. And, um, you know, it makes you motion sick after like 15 minutes. But <laughs> I mean, if you play it in short spurts, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, Dan won't be able to make any any minutes. <laughs> my, no, my my motion sickness is terrible. I always put on the tunnel vision. When I started Samurai Slaughterhouse, I was like, yeah, yeah, casual, traditional. And when I started running and everything started vignetting, I was like, yeah, that's the only way I can play. I, <laughs> I feel like I'll get motion sick quite a lot. Um, okay, so sticking on, sticking on that, though, with the Oculus, is there anything that you, it's on your wish list, maybe for a mm. gamer point of view and for a development point of view of what you'd like to see, which will make it a little bit better? like what i'd like to see like on the platform or like what um like what maybe maybe um probably on the hardware side of things first oh on the hardware side yeah you know what i would really love to see is um just foot tracking um Mm. i don't know if they can do it with the cameras or if there does have to be like an extra like accessory that you maybe strap on someone's ankles but i would just love for that to be not only like um available on the quest but kind of widely you know given Mm -hmm. out to people either included with the original one or something officially from oculus where when you buy the quest it's like hey do you want to add foot trackers on for 30 dollars more just something like that that you know we can get foot tracking and everyone has and has the same one it's not like you know a bunch of weird third party Mm -hmm. ones because that would be great like just being able to like you know kick stuff Mm -hmm. um i really like dance dance revolution i would love to be able to play that in vr um but you know i don't think the foot tracking is really good enough for that right now which you know we have beat saber next best thing Uh, beat saber (laughs) (laughs) he wants the extra foot trackers just for beat saber but um, you're right it doesn't seem that uh it doesn't seem that zuck is too into feet though yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's up with that. They're like, yeah. no, we, we can't make it look. You know what's funny is that they try to like play it off. They're like, no, we can't make feet look good. It's like, dude, there's like 30 A games million, out there. Yeah. The feet look great, and like, yeah. like five where they look bad, and they're like, look how bad the feet look in this one instance. It's like, well, they, yeah, but they look good most of the other times. Like, yeah, yeah sure. just gotta work on it. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I never thought. I never thought about foot tracking, but obviously, it's something that you can do with the PC VR headsets, and I think a lot of uh, fitness games do take advantage of that and some rhythm games as well and you're right i don't think they've been talking about that because they've been really talking about eye tracking you know more than anything mouth tracking as well but I yeah guess i think a lot of it's like a like social focus is they really mm. want it to be like a social thing and uh you know yeah. i guess that's what about, cool. like me personally i'm just more into games like I'm just, what about when you want to kick someone at the office so <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> or when you want to kick your chair back and just yeah. rolls back on your on your oh, wheels <laughs> Like, uh, I don't know if you've seen that indie. There's like an indie game someone made where you're rolling around in an office chair, like shooting stuff. I'll be perfect. Oh, really? Just kick yourself roll on the chair. <laughs> I like it. That's so funny. I was thinking like Hacky Sack would be a cool VR foot tracking game. Oh, uh, you can add, do it like with slow motion. So like, you feel yeah. like you're like the perfect Ooh. Hacky Sacker. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, there's so much possibilities. Bring, bring feet tracking. That's what we want to see in the Quest Showcase, some feet tracking. Um, um, so, okay, so that's with the um, hardware. Let's look at software. Is there anything, because there's it's very shooter-focused and such. Is there anything you think that the VR is missing? Like it's not 
tapping into the potential of a certain genre or anything like that? Oh, definitely. Um, I mean, besides <laughs> what I'm working on, like, um, I would just love to see more like driving games, really. Like, mm. I just think it's you're just also so much fun. Like that. when you're there, you just, you feel like you're immersed. Like, um, I mean, there's a few on PC VR and a um, few people have done some small things on side quests, but I just feel like it's, it's kind of like under tapped, which I can understand why a lot of people are kind of afraid to do things that could cause like motion sickness. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think there's ways you can like get around it. Just make it more arcadey. And I think even maybe like a, a sci-fi racing where it's something like uh like F Zero or something where there's not mm-hmm. like, you know, rolling or like bumping things like that. I think it could work. And I think that's something we're kind of missing more like vehicle mm-hmm. based. Yeah, stuff. there's there's not many, is there? There's there's obviously got what is it called? Z Racer that's that's on PC VR, I believe, where you use it's like a wipeout. If you yeah, but you drive I, with like your your arms. Yeah, you use your yeah. arms to kind of move around. You know, like a third person view, right? Oh, well, I guess that's a lot of racing games, I guess. But yeah, you're on a third person. You use your arms to go around. But yeah, that's the only one I can think of. But you're right. There's not many of those. I in... hopped into um Dirt Rally Two in VR, yeah. and uh, I accidentally did like a barrel roll and. <laughs> uh and landed it and like just kept going and i was like that was the coolest fucking thing i've done in (laughs) vr uh but yeah it's kind of like annoying to set up and the game isn't really designed for the vr like interface or anything so Mm. it's It's not is Dirt Rally like actually supported as a VR? Or is it just like yeah, a yeah, mod? yeah? No, it is. It is like a set of Corsa too, I believe. And uh, Project Cars too. Also, I played that yeah. one, and uh, I don't know. It just felt like something. Was just, I think because they didn't want people to get motion sick, they kind of like limited the motion somehow. And you you could probably go in there and mess around with the settings and get it to work. Yeah. But, uh, I was playing with an Xbox controller, which I know people are crazy about having the touch controls. I'm like, man, just give me like the triggers. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah I until I like, get an Xbox actual like too. steering wheel yeah. and gas pedal, that's like the next best thing. Like really. <laughs> I, I agree. I, I think just with the quest move controllers and there's a big gap in the middle, it's not it's not the same. I was like, I'd rather just have a controller in that respect. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for sure, for sure. By the way, uh, this is not a VIR question, but I remember you saying you love um, like Marvel stuff and such um, and Star Wars. Uh, did you play Lego Star Wars? Have you played the new one yet? I've played the old ones. I have not played the new one, not the Skywalker one, one yet. Okay. I've only heard good things though. So. It's amazing. There's a yeah. huge, huge Lego uh, game sale on Steam going on this weekend. Is oh, that? Is a, yeah, the yeah, the Lego out. Star Wars uh, Skywalker Saga came out like last week, and it's so good. It's so it, like if you're just a Star Wars fan, you're gonna love this game. Like it's pretty easy, but it's just beautiful, and the level of detail is is amazing. So yeah, I would definitely recommend Justin if you. If you're thinking of picking up a 2D game, are you uh, couch yeah, yeah. co-oping that one, Dan? Are you? No, uh, no, no. And I don't know anyone who's got it, to be honest. I don't know anyone's got it, but it's a good co-op couch co-op game. If I've heard good things about that part. Nice, nice. Yeah, I've been looking for something to play with my girl. We finished the uh, It Takes Two, so yeah. I heard very yeah, good things finished. about that. Yeah. yeah, that game is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's like a like a Pixar movie made into a video game. It's great. It Takes Two. Wow. Still- Nice, nice, nice. It's good. Like it's like it's well written. The gameplay is fun. It has like really good pacing. Like I think it it finds a good uh balance between being like actually a game and like challenging, but also mm. not being like frustrating, like you can't get through it. Like I think it's a yeah, a good example for anyone that's looking for like to make a game that's like kind of has like a appeal to like everyone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I guess that's the thing, right? You kind of want to try and get something like that for VR, but how do you make that couch co-op work in VR? Is it someone is in the VR headset and someone else is on like their smartphone and they mess around <laughs> with them in there, you know? I yeah, think was, like I know like the Vigo, a, Vigo. Like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I talk to those guys sometimes, like in a, yeah, it just looks cool. One person's like a giant and the other person's like a little person like shooting at them. Like mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I've been in that uh their Discord for a while, sort of like checking in every once in a while. Yeah, we need some more of those. I mean, more of those like easy accessible, something that Facebook commissions so it can be quite big. Because I think that's a good <laughs> that's a good way of because VR is such a solo kind of experience in a way when you're at home right of course you have the multiplayer but it would be nice to have more and more opportunities to get everyone in the family involved rather than just pass and play because i think that's what a few games do have you yeah. uh sorry have you had time to play or space to play space pirate like arena i've not played the full arena. I haven't tried it, no. yeah me neither oh. <laughs> We got a. The weather's make... finally getting nice enough here, though, where I can go outside and uh, at night just... or something. Yeah, exactly. 
put some lights on yeah for sure i i mean yeah i i do want to play that game but um there's no yeah i just don't have the space unless i'm outside that's the problem i wish one of the headsets can come up with like a an, an outside mode that the the light does not affect it or they have like shaders or something you on need it, like but... a lit up basketball court or something you know because right. mm-hmm. i mean because i know some people that say like oh you just wear it you know while you're inside that way no light touches the lenses but it to me at least when when i've ever done it like it's it's just too bright for like the cameras to the tracking to, uh, yeah. to track right yeah you probably have to do it like just when the sun's going down but mm-hmm. when it's not dark yet like that perfect lighting or, or uh, the, or the uh <laughs> yeah or an ir illum- illuminator something mm, like that yeah, out there yeah 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 um let's move on to uh well tab games samurai slaughterhouse first first i want to say um Justin, are you the only person in Tab Games, or is there other people? It, yeah, it's pretty much just me. Um, the only other person I got is Jeff Boole, mm-hmm. um, who he's like an amazing tech artist. He helped me um, add application space warp, and then also um, just kind of optimize some of the settings for the quest. But other than that, it's been all me. Uh, well, I got some wow. voice actors too, but <laughs> other like than the voice acting, it's all yeah. me. You know, I, I produce the music, um, which is know, friggin' program. awesome, by the way. Yeah. thanks yeah, yeah a lot of people you know i think that's like the highlight of which i'm excited about i love how the, the i think it just totally like brings the mood together because i was looking um to like buy it. first i was just using music that i found online and then i was like trying to find something with like a new javis type feel because i wanted it to be like samurai champ blue and i found someone that wasn't exactly what i was looking for but they had something similar and they're like oh yeah i'll hook you up and they're like oh it's a you know, fifty dollars a song, and I'm like, oh, 150 dollars for three Ooh. songs. Like, and at that point, I think I had spent like maybe two hundred dollars in total, mm-hmm. like assets making it. So <laughs> I was like, oh. And then just then, like, Humble Bundle had like music production software, like you know, like a thousand dollars worth of software for like thirty bucks or whatever. So I'm like, all right, let me try this. And then, you know, I had played in bands before and like mixed our music and stuff, so I knew nice. a little bit of it. It's kind of like pulling in beats and playing around with it and. Uh, yeah, it came together and it turned it out better than if I would have just like bought the license, I think. Oh, yeah. for sure. Because you'd be That's able to wild. put your own own spin on it and such. Shout out to, by the way, to Jeff Ball, who was on the show on episode 11, which is mad because <laughs> we're on episode 40 OG. Now. Yeah, he's like, I think he was the first ever guest, I think, on our show. So, and he was a great guy. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he's awesome. He's really talented too. And yeah, I mean, pretty much every show I've been on, I mentioned, they're like, oh, yeah, we had him on. So he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's been doing the rounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's been doing the rounds. Yeah, he's, no, I, I've, I follow him on Twitter and I see his, like, concepts that he's doing in, in I think he works in Unity as well, and the concepts that he's doing in there, and it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, we, he did the Don't Upset Bobby as well, which Samson has a beautiful video on his um, on his YouTube channel. <laughs> yes. I mean, he's great. Like, oh, God, like, yeah. stop falling over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eventually you numb to it though after 15 to 20 minutes after after bobby eats you like yeah times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly that's because you're, you're you finally know that everything is going to be okay i'm still alive <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah yeah he's working on too right now like actually as we speak new uh bloodstain system for it so that's yeah. gonna be exciting oh that's gonna be that's gonna be super excited so that's it's pretty remarkable yeah tab games is uh, pretty much yourself with a few few bits of help now and again um, outside and you've obviously been developing samurai solar house um where for people who don't know uh, it's a vr physics-based combat game uh, where you battle humans and demons which when the when you see a demon for the first time it scares the crap out of you because i don't know like what the hell is this giant tongue <laughs> this is whatever um uh, and it's in a, like a metroidvania style open world which surprised me because i had no idea that was that was a thing and um in the game and that was pretty pleasant because i've not really seen many metroidvanias in in vr so i like that you went that take because is that something that you've always wanted to do make like a metroidvania type game or is that just something that just came across as the scope got bigger yeah it actually was a way to make the scope smaller because it was originally going to be um i guess still kind of metroidvania but my original expression i was like oh it's going to be like zelda or like pokemon you kind of go to a town and like you uh you know do some quests there Mm -hmm. and you eventually you know open a new doorway Mm -hmm. or find an ability that opens it but um and it has been you know too much to write you know why is there a town here what are these people doing what do these people want so i'm like let me take the best of that and just kind of like cram it down you know take out the water make it a concentrated game so 
you know, you go through, you're exploring, you're killing people, but you're still going to be, you know, getting new abilities, unlocking new areas. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm even going to have NPCs that are going to have quests that you could talk to. So it's kind of all the stuff that was, you know, out in that big wide thing is now in a, you know, concentrated castle mountain. So you don't have to walk, you know, 50 feet to mm-hmm. kill the next person. And, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, I just, I just think it, it flows a lot better and it, it's a lot more fun. And um, it also lets me just kind of work on things that I want to add. Like there's like a gotcha pond machine where you can turn it and little like pokeball type things come out and you throw in a monsters pop out and come mm-hmm. out you know if it was before i'd have to like explain why that's there and something yeah. but now now i'm just like yeah hey, i want to make this let me just add another room and put it in there and now we can work <laughs> on that cool thing and then you know yeah. if we think of something else cool we just throw it in the loop pool or you know put it in, mm-hmm. make a new room for it so it, it's just great being able to just add that cool stuff without having to to add a bunch of context to it yeah, for sure. I never actually thought that. I thought, yeah, I thought it would be make it more complicated if you had it in a Metrovania, but you're right, because you put everything into one giant castle kind of thing. Each room could it be its own like big level or, yeah. or have some hidden things in there instead of having to explain in the story arc why why you have to go so far to travel to these places and it becomes a bigger game and it may not even fit on the quest because of the quest's limitations. So and yeah, quite... and let's kind of get you oh, get good. like right to the fun. Also, I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, for sure, sure. Yeah, I was gonna say, quite honestly, I like to treat this game more of like a sandbox and uh, just mess around, slaughtering. You know, yeah. just the bloods <laughs> everywhere. It's. <amazing. laughs> I think that's what's great about it too is that I'm gonna. It's gonna kind of. Well, right now there's a few things you could buy, but I want to put some things that are gonna be you know expensive and like you can grind for and kind of optional side quests. Because one of the things I liked about like the very first destiny game now i think there's kind of too much to do in it it's overwhelming mm. but kind of the first destiny game there is like kind of a point in it where you're like you know whatever i want to do i could pop over there and i'll you know just play it and i'll be getting some random rewards and i'll be like grinding you know just having fun and getting stuff i think that's what i want to capture here is that you can just kind of explore rooms just kill stuff open chests see what items you get um and, you know if you have goals like you want to unlock something you're trying to get somewhere you could do that but you can just hop in and just you know play around mess around without having to think about it too much and i think that's like something that's kind of missing in vr too is something you could just kind of play infinitely and play like um you know kind of turn your mind off and just play it sometimes yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, and, uh, so you're going with so, Yeah, I know we're an Oculus-based uh, podcast, but is this also due for PSVR too? Yeah, and uh, well, I have a publishing deal to bring it to PSVR too. Nice. Um, it's very, they're very limited on like dev kits. Thanks. Yeah. They're very limited on dev kits right now. I was so going to say, did you get one? Get hold yeah. Of. Yeah, no, I haven't been able to get a hold of one. Um, but there's a uh, kind of some stuff behind the scenes that uh, it's gonna be kind of making my game uh, more desirable to like other platforms. Can't really talk about <laughs> it too much, but basically some deals in the line, so that that may change. I'm able to get have more attention from Sony soon. So. Mm-hmm. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, that is the plan is to bring it to PSVR two, Oculus, and then uh, PC VR. Which the early access is already on the Quest too. <laughs> that's that's amazing, and honestly, like like I said, congratulations to that because. Sony, I think, are pushing VR so much and they, they do really care about it because when PSVR 1 came out, it died off very quickly, but games were still coming out. They were still, I mean, Moss 2 just came out on the PSVR and who's playing a PSVR right now, you know? And everyone's gearing up for PSVR 2 and the hype. PJ is now- from VR Verdict just got That's it. That's true. That's true. He just got <laughs> one. Um, but like in a grand sense of things, like the PSVR is now like kind of slowly dis- disappearing as PSVR 2 becomes and it's only been pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, which is great because as we alluded to earlier with um, Meta going for eye tracking and such, they're looking for those social interactions and, and such, right? Where I think PlayStation VR is going to be all about the games. And I think they can bring a lot to the to the table as well with that deal. So yeah, well done on that. That's fantastic to hear. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty yeah. exciting. Uh, I think it's going to be an amazing platform because, um, yeah, right now we're we are on the quest too, and it's like a great platform, but it is, uh, you know, a little limited. Not everyone has it. Not everyone knows about it. But I think Sony's yeah. like a big name, so. I mean, right now they're having kind of supply chain problems, but once exactly. once they're able to get those consoles in everyone's hands, like I think it's going to be a really good thing for VR as a whole. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, actually, on that, um. In terms of obviously it's on the quest and it's on PC VR or through Steam anyway. Um, has there been anything to the game where you've had to dumb down quite a lot for the quest version, or are both versions very equal 
uh, and they run fine on on, on both. So has it has it been like a lot of bottlenecking with that quest too? So yeah, it actually hasn't been too bad. We did right right now the two versions are the same. Uh, we did cut down on some things. We originally had like um, like those kind of a standing lamp so you could tilt over they're still in the game but originally we had kind of live lighting and those were like lights and they had like these crazy dynamic shadows on the wall and of, mm-hmm. of course the quest couldn't do that so now it's kind of like an unlit thing and there's like a few rooms with shadows um once it's all done we'll probably go back and pretty up the like the pc vr one a little more yeah. um but right now i'm pretty happy with how it looks we have like kind of like this fake um self shadow so even though like the characters aren't casting shadows on the floor mm-hmm. um they still have like those nice shadows on themselves so it's that sense. nice like anime like 3d kind of mm-hmm. look so mm-hmm. um yeah I'm, I'm pretty happy with it and uh but yeah right now the two are up on par and uh it's running really, really well on the quest so that's that's good to hear what um you kind of mentioned art style there so what inspired you to do that art style because it is beautiful it's like a it's not that cell shaded but it's the comic booky effect as well it's very like lies beneath uh on the on the quest the horror game ish you know in, in that kind of vein is that a style that you always wanted or is that something that you just was like this is very good to optimize on the quest with let's run with that so it's actually kind of like evolved a little bit at a time the original idea was it for it to look like a comic book like strictly like a manga mm-hmm. and um and it actually you would think it would be be lighter on the quest but it's actually you know there's a lot more to like create the outlines and different things like that so um mm-hmm. we did have to kind of do some tricks get optimized but yeah it was originally going to be like a manga like almost all black and white but uh we realized like there's i realized there's a lot of things like um cherry blossom trees if the leaves aren't pink it's not going to look right um and then there's some other stuff i wanted to communicate like i wanted there um to be like there's like a red luck cat and a green luck cat so they're going to be like different so there's a lot of things where you need color and then i just thought like kind of if you're going to be in the game for a long time in order to make the different areas look different didn't you like Mm -hmm. a little bit of color so Mm -hmm. i I wanted to bring in some color while still keeping that black and white like high contrast look so that's that's why um anything that's dark is like a really dark outline but then the everything else even though it's colored it's a really really light color really desaturated so it just has like kind of that nice just enough to give a hint that you know that that's what that color is but it still has Mm -hmm. that nice kind of comic book type look yeah, I do remember originally playing it, and it was all uh, all black and white. But I do like the I do like the color edition for sure. Yeah, yeah it was definitely a hard choice to make because it did look really cool with the black and white and just like the red blood. So um, yeah. I'll probably still. I don't know. You get to call back to it. Yeah, you get to call back. I want to do like a WarioWare game or something type thing (laughs) one day. That way I could just do get get every type of art style I want to do like out of my system. (laughs) Make like a because when I'm playing around with it, I found all these really cool looks. But it's like you know you have to pick one for like the game. But right, right, right. There's a lot of cool looks that haven't been done yet that look amazing in VR. So I think the nice thing about the color palette as well is that when the blood happens, it make it emphasizes that blood a little bit more because it's it's just that red just pops out you know from everything else so i think i think it adds a lot to the game to be honest is there the Uh, same amount of blood on each version uh kind of it depends how far back you go but there was like a an air or a glitch before it was just spawning like crazy amounts of blood (laughs) um so it depends how far back you go but uh yeah because it has to do with the unity physics system like when the sword hits like someone it doesn't hit it just like in one spot it hits it really like five times uh so originally it was spawning blood from each of those hit points it was just ridiculous <laughs> it's just everywhere like kill bill yeah. style yeah, yeah and it, which i didn't mind too much but it was just killing the performance so yeah i, didn't, like, I got so, you unfortunately but <laughs> that's fine that's fine and then you got the the ragdoll physics on on the different uh people are hilarious <laughs> so oh, yeah. funny i was gonna Sometimes say these physics are hilarious at times so <laughs> oh especially you get someone like near an edge or like on the edge of the stairs there's like these rickety bridges too with these railings and those railings are like stuck there in place unless like a dead body hits them so if you hit someone and like put them into the rail then they you know the rail breaks and they fall over the edge so, <laughs> and the same thing with like the sliding doors like those will slide but they're you know stuck but if you throw a dead body into it it'll break off so oh, wow. <laughs> i like putting those in there because i always thought that was like the coolest thing in games like you kill someone they fly and like break stuff so mm, and when, yeah. when before i did that everything was getting broken like when it wasn't supposed to so i was like <laughs> all right now we gotta like you know decide when this breaks you gotta take a little bit of control <laughs> yeah you can't just let everything just randomly happen otherwise <laughs> the whole game will break right maybe the ragdoll can be stay i can stay how it is it seems like a very like 
Mortal Kombat-esque, you know, with the blood and how everything's breaking when you're fighting. I remember when I was playing it this morning, actually, um, I I went behind somebody and I, I, I killed him and I kind of stabbed him, right, with two hands uh, with the samurai sword. And then I would continue walking and I didn't realize that I, the guy's literally still stuck on the sword. <laughs> I'm just dragging, dragging him. him around. <laughs> I'm just dragging him along into the oh, next place. monster. Yeah. Brutal, brutal. <laughs> that is great. It's hard to do, but sometimes if you get someone like when they're right against the wall, you can like pin them to the wall too, which is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes yeah, my right. samurai sword has got stuck as I'm walking because I'm holding it like this. I just lose it and I'm like, hold on, <laughs> it's got stuck in the wall. <laughs> oh yeah, but there's one room too where the ceiling's really low, so as soon as you go to hit someone, you're like, and you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, yeah. Um, with this, with this game, kind of, what was the inspiration for it? Obviously, you had that kind of samurai game that you developed way way back but what was the inspiration of this was it just from a different amount of games that you played over the years and you kind of put some of the elements that you like and put it into one uh yeah as far as like um it was funny because originally when it started out uh the idea was it was going to be like time crisis with swords it was just going to be like a wave slasher and it ended up just kind of like building and building on there but uh as far as like the gameplay a lot of the inspiration i would say like bushido blade i really like that game mm-hmm. how um you know you're able to target like different parts on the person's body so like um, yeah. the samurai slaughter house you stab them through the heart and you get that right spot it kills them instantly um, like headshots do more damage legs and arms barely take any health so yeah. i really like you know how machido blade like they had that where you can get the you know insta kill if you got him in the head and mm-hmm. you're able to block and guard um really like uh way the samurai too like are we able to counter so with this like if you block someone when you know when they're swinging they'll be kind of stunned for a second you can go in and counter mm-hmm. um and then yeah. as far as like the level design, kind of Doom 2 is actually a big inspiration on that because yeah. I just liked how, you know, you would go in, you would explore, you know, you find the key and you go through. So it's kind of like a, a mix of like an open mm. world, but also like a linear thing, like kind of combined. So I really, you're, really like you're, that. You're guided then, uh, through the open world. Yeah, it's an open world, but like directions. So you kind of yeah. give them, you have that freedom, but they're still still um you're still like directed yeah. somewhere it's not like you have like a giant map and you're like uh where do i go uh yeah it's not right. just it's like it's a little you can see a little bit of zelda influence there too with like linked to the past in the dungeons or something right where yeah. it is you have to find like the key and such but obviously not where you have like a full map and you have to go searching everywhere but um you can see those little inspir- it's nice when you have like an indie developer working on something because you see what they've been influenced on because you've kind of been brought up with the same kind of games as well yeah and it's really nice to see to be honest but yeah will yeah. you uh do you have any plans for multiplayer at all um right now i've, I've been thinking about it mm-hmm. i've been kind of talking to oculus about their um with their team uh, about bringing the game to like the quest and i'm gonna kind of get some of their advice on it but yeah i have a couple ideas um it may either be kind of like a pvp type thing um because I did make a, like a multiplayer demo previously for like this other company. They're making a, it's like experimental VR hardware. So um, they mm-hmm. wanted to like do like a, a showcase of it. So I had this thing where it was like, a, we made it like a location-based thing, but like it was like multiplayer, like the players would, you know, line up depending on how many players would be, there would be more enemy spawning. And um, it was funny because they were like, you know, can we make it so when the players like swing at each other, their swords clash? And I'm like, I don't think it's safe, but I'll put it in there. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, well, we may get some broken controllers. I think it's fine, but I don't know. They had, they had 10 people playing and no one got hurt. So I think it sounded mm. like it. Wow. <laughs> That's but, impressive. Uh, yeah, so I may do something like that, either like a wave slasher or maybe like, you know, it's the two of you and then waves coming in and then, or um, I may mm. just do like a PvP thing. Like a horde um, mode or something, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, even with the new, luckily with the new like Metroidvania, if I did want to make that multiplayer, it could even be where there's like a host and like a second person following behind. And mm-hmm. when the host leaves the room, maybe the next person has no choice but to get teleported yeah. with them. Uh, gotcha. Maybe something like that. I just got to kind of, I'm going to talk to Oculus and see, uh, you know, what they think and they want to give me the money to add it in <laughs> all that stuff that's fair uh, yeah definitely but, um you still planning for a 2022 release does that still look likely or is that uh, just... mm-hmm. probably more like around this time next year because i was trying to august so like i see this being about a year from being done uh got it, so. got it. yeah but okay. yeah but we yeah. still we got an early access right now, which it's um it's it's decent, um. But I'm hoping probably by the end of the year it should be good enough to put it like on Steam early access. So mm-hmm. probably 
for, for it to hit the quest store probably not till next year though just because mm-hmm. um you know they got the higher higher standards there that's i was going to ask actually on that because i i wasn't sure myself um obviously you've got the app lab and then you've got the quest store is it is it literally the app lab has way less requirements to get on there and that's why a lot of companies go onto there first and then yeah basically the app lab um people have experimented with it as long as the game opens and doesn't break the quest you're fine <laughs> someone put an app mm. on there or it's just a scene with a cube floating and app lab approved it so okay. I <laughs> there's supposedly some kind of curation process but i i think their standard is just that your it app works doesn't wreck yeah. That it, yeah it boosts up and doesn't wreck the quest like that's you know, mm-hmm. like the only thing whereas with the oculus store it's the exact opposite there's basically no I don't, I don't know does it sound weird like no specific there's no specific way to get on the oculus store they just gotta there are no you know, guidelines see, you have see, no see your project and uh and like it <laughs> and yeah, uh right. you know there's no submission process um you know if you have like a publisher the publisher can probably get it in front of their eyes but other than that um they just gotta happen to see it on reddit or something and be like hey that's cool Let's, uh, reach out to them <laughs> oh i <laughs> see so you can't you there's nothing there's no it's not like an app store or anything like that where you can put it in for submission then get it reviewed and get it added they have to literally reach out to you essentially to kind of get it on there pretty much i think their official stance is that when you submit it for app lab that like you're submitting it for both and then they just tell you which one it is but really like they, they just mm. put on app lab like like there's not there's not really yeah. like an official like mm. here submitted for the quest store and you know if it's not it's not like with the google play store you send it there and then they send it back saying like no like we yeah. need the back button to exit the game or something like that like it's there's no no process at all <laughs> that's just, that's essentially what app lab is then that's that process right but then yeah, the yeah. quest store is just if they want it on there they'll reach out to you kind of thing there's nothing that you can actually do apart from getting it in front of their eyes in a way yeah yeah the best thing you could do like if they're not just happy to reach out to you is you know work with a good publisher like you know like vertigo or team said oh, i don't know put out team 17s never people have problems <laughs> with them but you know one, one of the the companies that's already published vr games and that quest oculus works with like that's mm-hmm. probably the best way you know to get it in front of their eyes if oculus doesn't reach out to you <laughs> mm. yeah that's that's good information because i didn't i didn't know how it worked because the other i think two three weeks ago we had the warplanes game that came to app lab and then it went to oculus store and then they got the sequel but it's the sequel straight to app lab like there's no oculus store one for the sequel yet and i was like oh. why didn't they why don't they just put it straight onto oculus store it doesn't make any sense but and now i see it's, it's really up to meta to kind of decide what they want on their store yeah and supposedly once you once you're in with them like your next game you're good to go so i don't i don't know what's going on behind the scenes there but <laughs> i just i uh, picture zuck in like some sort of big chair like a king and there <laughs> are you know somebody's coming in like gestures and he's saying next you know next and uh and that's the curation <laughs> it's probably something like that <laughs> but i mean but that but i mean although that would was- would imply that he actually that's fair that's (laughs) exactly i don't think he looks at any of it that's someone else's job um um, obviously like it's you you, it's yourself pretty much on tab games with a samurai solar house you have a patron um which has a couple tiers obviously you can get early access to the game through there and um obviously you can that's the way to support you and such but have you gone through any other um, options to support like kickstarter or anything or have you ever considered them i uh, haven't done kickstarter yet um is the thing that made me nervous about kickstarter is it takes like a lot of time to get a campaign together and then if you don't mm. reach your funding goal that you don't like keep the money um, so it's just a waste of time in a way it can't yeah be but um i was initially going to go with like some investors but now it's looking like i'm going to be able to get like uh grants from different companies mm-hmm. uh, like oculus and probably possibly windows and like pico so um that's probably the route i'm going to go and then if i still need money after that i might go with um investors um mm. Right now, I'm kind of just rolling on my like savings account because yeah. um, wow. I, I, I had just saved up for my 401k, and I was like, you know, what, let me just <laughs> let me just do this. You and, sound uh, like an yeah, indie got... developer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. But I mean, luckily, it was it was to the point where like I have like the confidence in the game. I'll know like at least make my like even even if the game like flops, I'll still make enough back to to cover yeah. the time that I took off work and the stuff I took out my savings. So I'm not too worried about that. But, uh, 
And it's a huge yeah, learning curve from uh, your game because you've gone from, you know, zero to full game on the quest, right? Pretty much. So even if it does flop, the, you've you've got so much experience from all those hours, right? So, yeah, yeah. And now I got these job offers. So if I do want to go back to work, I was working in insurance before. So, if, you know, the worst case scenario, now I can get an actual cool job <laughs> instead of <laughs> going back to like insurance. Like, uh, For sure, you'll get a, you can get a game dev job pretty simple then. Once you, once you have something like that, yeah, you'll have a good resume for it, right? So if it does flop, it's not like the end of the world in a way. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I do get like a little contract work and a little bit of consulting here and there. Uh, mm-hmm. People that want to start uh, VR like games programs, I'll do like consulting. So I'll tell them like, you know, this is, you know, what assets I think you should use and, you know, how you, yeah. how you can make the game. So I've done a little bit of that and then um, a little bit of contract work too. People just paying me to make weird little XR little things. things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. And it could take off and then you're making Samurai Slaughterhouse too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. That's, that's what I'm hoping. Like the some of the projections are really crazy so it's like if i'm a, <laughs> if i'm a, that's what's weird because i'm thinking like oh if i make all these millions of dollars i'm gonna be able to uh make better video games with it <laughs> yeah for sure of course, and i'm like thinking sure. of ips i can afford like <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure you could team oh, up man. with that's sony what and do a... doing right now yeah <laughs> yeah you team up with sony and do a ghost of shishima version of some samurai slaughterhouse uh, actually <laughs> samurai slaughterhouse walkabout mini golf course <laughs> time oh, time it with your release one year from now uh, i should hit those guys up <laughs> crossover those guys those guys would probably be willing to as well you know if you have a game on the Oculus store they're, they're, they're nice people over there um with with obviously being yourself how does it how do you go about this is a question from um empire monkey in our discord and patron um how do you go about promoting the game so it a lot of where, where you're going to promote will um, depend what your goals are, but I found like the three good ones. Um, Reddit is good. Um, you can get like random eyes on your game. Um, you just got to have a thick skin. Just know people are going to talk crap. <laughs> no, matter, no matter how good your game looks, they're going to find something <laughs> wrong with it. But it is kind of a filter because when people talk crap about it, then you can be like, well, this is the thing that, you know, it's standing out that people. Can there's see a hint of truth. Yeah. That there's something. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there is something wrong with it. But um, but that's like the best one for getting in front of industry professionals. Like the majority of like publishers, companies, uh, things like that, that have either hired me or like offered me money or you know, public deals, things like that. I've been through Reddit. Really? So that, yeah, yeah. That's where you're going to want to like post your stuff if you're trying to get the attention of companies. Mm. Um, Twitter, I would say, is the best for networking. Like you want to post yeah. on there and like you'll find customers and stuff, but uh, mostly you'll be able to meet content creators, other VR developers, um, voice actors. That's where I get all my voice actors from is Twitter. Yeah. Um, Us. Yeah, yeah, you guys do Twitter. <laughs> so yeah, Twitter, I would say, is the best for networking, for meeting people. And then um, the best for just getting your game like in front of strangers' eyes right now is TikTok. Um, even mm. like a bad post on TikTok is still like a few hundred likes. So like it's, it's going. And then, you know, you, you may have to post, you know, nine or 10 before it starts taking off. But once you, once TikTok knows that people want to see your stuff, like it starts putting it in front of them. And uh, yeah. So it should become a TikTok Samurai Slaughterhouse. Uh... <laughs> Hey, like, Master. like, shout, shout out to friend of the show, Tech Man Ju. Um, oh yeah, he's Julian, who's, here. yeah, he, um, he's reached a million now in terms yeah. of subscribers on TikTok, which I think when he, when he did the podcast with us, we think, gave him the bump. He was at like six hundred some thousand. Yeah, yeah. He got <laughs> that less, less talk all, Oculus bump to a million. All because of us, you know. To be honest, it was, he didn't even do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the the fact that his. His most popular video, at least it was the last time I looked on this uh, TikTok, is the, um, oh, I forgot the game. What's the note? Blade and Sorcery, right? With the ragdoll and such, right? And seeing how, I think he like stabs someone in the head and lifts up the person's head or something. And it's, <laughs> it's a pretty crazy, but that's got like 4.2 million likes Jimmy and such, Griffiths. right? Yeah, nice. and I can see something like Samurai Slaughterhouse being, obviously once it's more developed, I can definitely see it being a, hit hit on tiktok because it's just hilarious with the ragdoll physics right (laughs) so yes you finish your game samson you make your tiktok and get good at it and then there's a partnership and once again that's talk oculus has made a million for somebody (laughs) i do have a question to follow up on the reddit what subreddits exactly do you recommend uh so there's uh virtual reality vr gaming um if you're going on the quest of the oculus one 
Um, I mean, you can still post on there if you're not, but just know that every other question is going to be, is this on Quest? <laughs> so um, <laughs> I mean, that's what people got. That's what people have. So yeah, the Oc- I think there's a Quest 2, Oculus Quest. And then there's there also is, yeah. the Steam VR one is all right if you're uh, in that. Um, some people like the general ones, like gaming or like indie dev, indie gaming. Those ones I haven't had too much success with. And again, when you post on there, it's a lot of people saying like, oh, this should be like a flat game. Like, <laughs> like is there really? a flat version? Yeah. You know, a lot of the question that I'm like, no, it's, it's too physics based, <laughs> but yeah, now I actually could make a flat version. I could just use the, cause there's, I don't know if you've seen, like, this is actually inspired by Halo CE, but like um, you can actually, there's actually enemy factions. So sometimes enemies will like fight each other. So if mm-hmm. I wanted to, I could like create like a flat version using those enemy controllers, but yeah, down mm-hmm. the line maybe. <laughs> So you yeah. do um literally so that's that's what your um that's how you promote it that's that's everything you do yourself there's no like community offices or anything that you hire at all it's yeah not yet once i have funding i want to get like a community manager but yeah right now it's just been uh mm-hmm. just posting a lot uh facebook groups is okay once in a while it kind of hit and miss it was really dead for a while um kind of came back a little bit not my favorite platform, but if you're I feel like you said uh, you posted on Twitter that you got like a bunch, like one post sort of went viral there. Yeah, like yeah, that. I got like 300 likes because I yeah. hadn't like posted on there in forever. And that may be why, too, is I didn't post on there in forever. So there's a lot of people that, you know, hadn't seen the game like seeing it for mm. the first time. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I noticed for like a while there was just no one was getting any responses on like Facebook. But now it's like a little bit, I think. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little bit of a dying, dying platform. Um, I have actually two more questions from Empire Monkey. He gave me loads, and I think we've answered most of them. Um, first one's a really quick one. Uh, ninjas, are they in the game? Are they planning to be in the game? Yeah, there will be ninjas. So I already got like the model for it, and um, you know they got the face mask on, like the hood, <laughs> and um, I, I gave them like I took out their pupils because they look cooler that way, and uh, they're gonna be able to jump. So that's what's gonna kind of distinguish them from the other enemies is that they're gonna be jumping and coming at you from up on high. And uh, one time I was playing, a couple of the enemies glitched and like bounced up in the air and came down at me. I was like, ah, and killed them like that. And I was like, oh, that's really cool. Like we definitely gotta have it. I do that on purpose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so yeah yeah yeah, definitely gonna be ninjas (laughs) (laughs) for sure for sure and i'm kind of paraphrasing his last question but um obviously um in terms of the art style did you do all the art yourself or did you hire someone to kind of do the art style for you yeah so um there's no one hired i did it all i i guess 100% 100% say I did it all myself because basically the way my process is, is um, I don't do the 3D modeling. Uh, my art is all, I knew I do computer graphics, like, you know, well, it would be like Photoshop, but I use PaintShop Pro because mm-hmm. um, it's cheaper <laughs> and yeah. Photoshop's expensive as hell. But um, so basically I'll get, I'll get a 3D model. I'll find something cool. And then um, it of course doesn't look like it fits in my game when I first get it. So I'll, I'll take the, all its textures and I'll do things where I kind of desaturate it, where I lower the colors um, and I'll go in and darken all the outlines, um, add outlines, kind of just change with the saturation, mess with, mess with the textures. And then I'll change the materials and bring it in. Um, and that's how most of the, uh, like the 3D art is done. As far as the flat art, like the, uh, there's like paintings on the walls. Um, the Skybox 2 is like a painting. The way I made those was I actually went uh, through like the Metropolitan Museum, but there's probably other museums that they actually have an online database and you can go and find artwork from like the 15th and 16th century in Japan. Mm-hmm. And it's all free public domain. So you can use it however you want legally. So yeah. I'll go and I just kind of cut out houses and all the buildings from there. And I kind of take all the color out and then I'll go in and just by hand kind of paint in the mountains and just kind of connect it all in. So um, I do make it, but just not from scratch. Is my, my method is kind of that's freaking cool finding things from different places and like a collage making yeah. it fit together yeah exactly it's a lot of sourcing things and just kind of making it fit together and like just kind of a, a lot of looking through catalogs of like models and just kind of seeing having a good eye and knowing like you know this is going to look cool in the game mm-hmm. even if it looks kind of weird and like it doesn't look like it's going to fit um just knowing like once you do this once you stylize it like how it's going to come out you have the vision to see it how it will be in your game yeah yeah, yeah exactly Oh, that's nice. I think you can claim that as your own. That's like um, sampling 100%. in hip hop or something. You've taken something and then you've kind of put your own spin on it, and now it's now you've made it your own, which is yeah, nice. yeah, exactly. No, that's 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 really cool. Uh, Samson, did you have any other questions for Justin? Um, 
I mean, not about the game specifically, but maybe like, what are your favorite VR games to play? Ah, uh, so some of my favorite VR games, um, kind of some of some of the we already mentioned, like uh, Super High is definitely one of my favorite ones. Um, Overloaded, I love, which is like the descent type game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's pretty fun. I play it with two joysticks, so I'm like, <laughs> and then um, let's see what's an- oh, there's another really good one that's called. Um, Oh, shoot, no, I can't think of it. It's like a roguelike one where you're floating in space. Let me open up my Steam real quick. Put him on the spot there, Samson. Oh, <laughs> Star Shelter. That's what it's called. <laughs> Star Shelter. So that one is, is pretty fun. It's kind of like you, you float around like um, kind of like Echo VR, um, mm-hmm. but you're on like a space station that's floating through space. And there's kind of like all this space junk and like broken out space stations and spaceships floating past you. And you got to mm-hmm. kind of float out to it and you go on there and you kind of take those apart and like mm-hmm. harvest parts from them, you bring it back and you rebuild like your space station. You had defenses on it. So if like, you know, drones or aliens attack you, you can like fight them off. Or if your defenses aren't in place, like your place will get wrecked, your plants will get killed and stuff. So and I like that game. That's like a lot of fun, I think. Um, I've, also like just, an I've just Googled it and the reviews are really good for this one yeah you're right it looks a lot like um lone echo a little bit in terms of the floating mechanic right or oh, being in a space center a space station sorry yeah that one's a lot of fun um no, finally started yeah. playing beat saber recently <laughs> yeah. i just played blade and sorcery for the first time like earlier in the week someone from really? Oculus. yeah they played my game and they're like it's good but you know it's missing it needs like haptics um and stab marks which was something i was already working on but i was like they're like look at blade and sorcery like because it feels good and you stab people there so i like played that mm. and took notes on their haptics but yeah that was a lot of fun i, I liked playing that yeah i was gonna say it's like you could take a lot of inspiration from that game because uh with the ragdoll physics and such yeah um, that was pretty good well, i've been playing star trek bridge crew a bit oh, nice too. you that found some fun. people to play with huh yeah yeah i finally got people to play <laughs> with <laughs> We're- yeah, it's definitely better when you have people. I mean, it's still it's it's all right by yourself, but like it's it definitely like shines when you have people, and then like 100%, you know yeah. when you, you look back and you see like the captain is right there and they're like moving and you know you mm. see the person actually yeah. on the clipboard. <laughs> my my friend loves playing and he'll like role play as his uh like character, so he, he'll like throw in a bunch of one liners that a non human <laughs> would like. And it's just, He's like, That's I've got great. no emotion. What? Why are you asking me that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he just plays Spock. I love yeah, that. I love that. Yeah. That's so funny. That's too good. <laughs> <laughs> that is really funny. Uh, you play. You play predominantly then through the Quest Two. You don't have any other VR headsets. Uh, just... I do have. Uh, oh, he just I... I seen on Twitter. The G2, oh yeah, yeah, right? I did. Uh, yeah, I did get the Reverb G Two. Microsoft sent me one of those, nice. so I took it out and I played with it, but. um I ordered my prescription lenses first. I'm waiting for those to come in, but I may just like put on some contacts and play because I'm like wanting to try it out. So. Do you play? Have you played uh, Flight Sim? Oh, Microsoft Flight Sim there? No, yeah. I haven't played that one yet. Okay, Is that one good. What, yeah, when you get that G2 set up, that you're gonna want that. Yeah, I gotta try it. When I looked at it, I'm like, man, this looks kind of complicated. I don't know, but like maybe I gotta give it a try. Um, there's, there's different yeah. settings, though, isn't there? Or something like that. Like, like yeah, a, it's definitely a there's a lot of settings, and it's not necessarily easy to fly the plane. <laughs> uh, but once you're up there and you're looking out the window, you're like, holy shit! Nice. <laughs> yeah. Can people can people be passengers on flight sim? So say you be the yet, pilot. Not I'm yet. Like, okay. I do I'd think like to they're. Be a passenger. Uh, <laughs> yeah i do me too me too i really want i really want my friend to just fly me around but <laughs> you're like i just want to enjoy the plane i don't want to yeah. fly exactly <laughs> now we have to fly we, you can we do play multiplayer but you know you're each in your yeah, own right. plane yeah right. uh, and you can't crash oh. i mean that you makes sense each other. <laughs> yeah exactly you can't yeah. shoot each other i think that's a different i think it's a different game you're trying to find here we're yeah, warplanes yeah. or something <laughs> <And>, uh... <laughs> Yeah, no, I used awesome. to like the old like Red Baron game. Like that was pretty fun. They got like terrible reviews, but I used to love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've heard I've heard nothing but good things about Squadrons. I think they've updated it so much, right? And a lot oh, of the Star Wars, Wars fans. One? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fun. That one's really good. I can only get so far in the campaign though because it, it crashes after like the fourth mission oh, or something. And I'm like, I'm like, ah, oh, but I still play online. But that one's good too. That one works really well with the two joysticks, also, yeah. especially for the Tie Fighter because it actually has like two joysticks mm-hmm. in it, like. Mm-hmm. Cool. yeah, yeah that one's really good i just it. like how they you can like redistribute like your shield power and stuff it, it makes it really feel like you're like in star trek you're like <laughs> shields to rear or shields to rear <laughs> power <of> weapons <laughs> <For sure. laughs> yeah that it seems like a star wars fan's dream that game 
um yeah I mean, hopefully maybe next year we'll see you in in the oculus gaming showcase the meta gaming showcase the samurai slaughterhouse makes an appearance who knows maybe uh, not this, maybe not this week but maybe next year <laughs> we'll yeah see. that would be awesome i got to be in the the upload vr e3 showcase that was pretty cool that's nice awesome. yeah that's awesome um do you have any advice for aspiring developers um i would just say uh make sure to post a lot don't don't underestimate that you gotta like if people don't know about your game then you know mm-hmm. you're gonna be dead out of the water so i would say post a lot um you know don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money even if it's just a hobby for you any hobby you have you're gonna spend some money so i mean if you see like a cool framework you know and it costs fifty dollars if it's gonna save you like three four weeks of time it's <laughs> worth that fifty dollars so that's how i would say don't be afraid to spend money um and uh yeah, I would say just try to do something unique, you know, try to knock it out of the park. Like you, you see, yeah. you see what's on VR, what's already been done. Um, some people will just, you know, make clones of what's already been done. But I say, you know, try, mm. try to make something that that's your, all your own. <laughs> yeah, no more zombie games, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shooters. <laughs> Wait, did you see Contractors is adding zombies? Yeah, I did. Yeah, Contractors is adding, adding zombies. I was like, oh, man, the zombie train does not end. <laughs> I know there'll, there'll always be zombie games and probably always more like robot shooting games probably too they're just so common but i mean i don't mind something like walking dead doing another walking dead game because it's so good <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah. it was like every game has started to add its own little zombie element into it just to add that and i swear we had that craze in like 2004 2005 i remember like red dead redemption added zombies call of duty obviously with the zombies and i think we've gotten back to that straight we're gonna have a uh, 3d tvs again soon <laughs> i think it's just like the easiest thing to to make because i mean if the ai is dumb then you're like well it's a zombie exactly it's yeah. a zombie. <laughs> or if it's a robot the robot's malfunctioning that's why it's dumb like but you know if it's a real person then it's got to be somewhat convincing <laughs> true but yeah um i only have one more thing to be honest justin is samson do you have anything else before i ask the question? um oh gosh uh i i can't think of what i was gonna ask it was something minute Okay, I was I was gonna ask um, Justin if you had an unlimited budget, what kind of game would you like to make? Like your a dream game that you would like to make in the future? If you had an unlimited budget, and you obviously had the time. Oh, if I had unlimited budget and time, mm-hmm. it's a hard one. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I, I, you know, I would love like a uh, like a Star Trek game because if I had a budget, I can afford that IP. I would love like a Star Trek game, something like Bridge Crew, but where you actually get out and like explore like a planet and something that mm. that wasn't they could have combat, but was still like narrative based. Because I've always wanted to, I really like Star Trek, and I feel like all the games you're always just like blowing up stuff, and mm. you know that that's that's fun for video games. And I understand like it takes a lot to make narrative, but I would just love like. You know, you're just you're just chilling, like helping aliens and stuff. Like, I, yeah, I would just love like just like a narrative, like kind of like a No Man's Sky, Star Trek kind of thing where you're yeah, discovering yeah, planets like, and such, and yeah, maybe No Man's Sky but less uh, emptiness, <laughs> less empty <laughs> space. And, like, I don't I like No Man's Sky, but um, it's you're just, right, it's a, it's a lot. They it's just... complicated too. That's yeah. I was talking to Skiba and um, mm-hmm. and he loves No Man's Sky and I love it too. But I was like, you know, it, it is really like complicated and overwhelming for new players He's like no no, no. You, you just couldn't have it there's any flaws with it <laughs> it's, it i have seen him see, yeah <laughs> it's like it's, but... <laughs> it's like destiny 2 to be honest it is like there's so much content now like you mentioned earlier it's like it's hard to get into unless you have some a buddy who already knows what they're doing and that's how i got into destiny 2 because my friend just showed me everything while he, and he was on like a higher level so he just helped me kind of <laughs> and every time out. i pop into destiny 2 i'm like what is even going on there's all these events <laughs> and then and they don't even have instructions like in the game how to do the events it's like you have no. to go online and be like here's the strategy guys like you have to use this random item in your inventory it's like what? How, how are they getting away with this like <laughs> yeah, <I don't laughs> no way this would fly if i did this like, no instructions <laughs> they got rid of instructions <laughs> manuals in the game box and now they've got rid of it in the actual game too so <laughs> no one has a clue how to play <laughs> That's a good thing about VR though, because it's a lot of the games they don't need too many instructions, to be honest, because you're kind of in the moment, right? And like the samurai, obviously you have some scrolls and such, and it gives you some instructions at the start. And but it's quite, you know, you can't you kind of can get the hang of it very quickly and understand what you're trying to do, right? It's like the yeah, Mario yeah, type effect so of a too. game. So well, you've got to like because there's no real HUD in VR, so you've got to figure out ways to incorporate uh 
all the things that would normally be in a HUD and like your tutorial, you know. Mm -hmm. But you can get like like in your game when, in that room when you learn how to dash or whatever. Yeah. And, yeah, that, yeah, and that was the hardest one. I even with the scrolls, people couldn't get it. So I like only put an extra painting, and I had to. Take, I actually took a picture of my own hand holding the down button on the Oculus controller. I did see that. Yeah, I did see <laughs> filtered that. Filtered it and stuff. <laughs> to make it look like a painting. <laughs> That's it's how like, you did it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it fits in well. It fits in perfectly well with the game. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah awesome awesome um well that that's everything i had um justin thank you so much for um joining us on the show i'm sure a lot of we have quite a few listeners who are aspiring devs or, or dabbling into like production or so um so they always love our developer interviews because they really get a lot from it especially empire monkey who asked a few questions today <laughs> he he loves it because he says he he learns quite a lot from just the just the guests being on the show so thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and sharing your like whole journey it's been it's been good yeah absolutely thanks for having me on i had, I had a good yeah, time thank you <laughs> definitely do you want to plug anything as as we leave out the show yeah so um the music from the game which you know we've talked about everyone loves it's all it's on mm -hmm. um it's available on uh, uh what's the thing called spotify uh mm -hmm. amazon music and uh, apple music also youtube like everywhere else so if you just search tap music uh that'll come up and then uh, of course, Samurai Slaughterhouse, if you want to get in on the early access, uh, my Patreon is $5 at the bottom tier. Um, once you hit 30, you get a key for the game. And it also has on there Vehicular Rampage, which is a Carmageddon-inspired kind of side project I'm working on. Nice. Um, if that's PC VR and Quest, you could drive around a little city and smash through windows of buildings mm -hmm. and run people over. So, <laughs> Like a rampage, <laughs> rampage in a car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a good 15, 20 minutes of fun. Like, too. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely check it out on Patreon. Uh, it's on itch also right about to launch on side quest um, nice. i don't know when this launches, but it may be launched by the time it comes out so uh that's, that's yeah that's mostly it <laughs> awesome nice. awesome um, i'll add all your links to the show notes below so if anyone wants to check that out they can just jump into the show notes and click on the links too um Sweet. justin thanks a lot for joining me and samson thanks a lot for being here like normal yeah i do want to say i've been playing the synth Riders dlc lindsey sterling and it's amazing i'd never heard Lindsay sterling before this week and uh this week i listened to a few of her albums uh on repeat probably netted like 20 30 hours of listening to Lindsay sterling oh. at this point she has an amazing uh, halo cover the cover of the halo song that's where i heard of her <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah i've never heard of her either google that one next but yeah, yeah she did the halo theme song as like a music video she's like playing violin and there's like sparks <gasps> running around everything it's oh, great sick. that's fantastic <laughs> oh, but yeah uh, the new DLC, fantastic, and uh, mm -hmm. I will do my best to climb up the leaderboards on those songs. He's back into the synth writers. Yeah, Samson loves. We, we our first I, our first twenty episodes, Justin. We spoke about synth writers in every episode. I like you know <laughs> a, a, atrophied or whatever. Like I, I was playing, I was like, wow, I can't play like I used to. I gotta I gotta, gotta build up, up these synth synth writers muscles. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, I'll jump into it too soon. I'll, I'll love to play it. Um, but yeah, uh, for the, everyone listening and on YouTube, thanks very much. Remember on Wednesday, if you're seeing this, this will be out on Tuesday. So if you're seeing this before the quest showcase, definitely jump in to the Let's Talk Oculus YouTube channel because we will be attempting to react to it live. But we can't promise if it will work. But we'll try our best. Um, and I'll put that link in the show notes too. But thank you uh, so much for listening and we'll catch you all next week. Bye now.